Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, even even though I failed that a bunch of times, I uh, so far so fun. So far so fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm not ashamed. For not the first for the first time, let's let's have this be on record. I am not ashamed of something I did in this game. Could I have done? Could I have done better? Maybe. Quite possibly. But what but, can't uh, you say that about? Yeah. I mean, uh, any game that you ship, there's stuff that you wish you could have done. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I think this was Lloyd's fault. I think Lloyd did the art. It's possible. I remember I, I talked to Lloyd recently, and I asked him to give me a list of the levels that he did. And he might have told me that this level is one of them, but I I don't, you know, listen. So you asked him to give you a list and then didn't pay any attention to it? No, not at all. That's my MO. You pretend like you care, but actually don't. Don't really. Not about, not about anything. Unless you're talking about me, I could really care less. Oh, the gadgets. The gadget's not equipping, man. That's just... That's just too much to handle. I like how they kick the proto pets. Yeah. Well, those are exterminator bots. They're here to kill the proto pets. I see. And you're just getting in their way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're here to kill the proto pets. You, whatever. All right. I I'm pretty sure that uh, as a Lombax, you're considered a pest in parts of the galaxy. Holy crap, dude. Max is able to get a ton of proto pets on screen. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the. Uh, uh, when, the when the character modelers were making. The proto pet. One of the constraints they had was we needed to fit a ton of proto pets on there. Because right. the whole thing about this level is it's overrun. Right. If you can only have six proto pets on screen, then you're kind of hosed. So it's part of why he only has two feet, and like his skeleton isn't that complicated. Sorry, I was panicking for a second there because I already had a bouncer out and I was trying to just get another one out. Got it. I was like, explode! Oh yeah, the, the lava gun's actually probably a good idea for this. For yeah, kinda. Except we might accidentally upgrade it. That's exactly the problem. Dude, that protopet just spit out more protopets. Yeah, it's crazy. That's fucked up. God, they just keep doing that. <laughs> They're all one-hit kills, though. They're dropping gravy bolts at this point, though. They're <laughs> not dropping for reals bolts. There's so many of them. There's just so many of them. Well, this is a pretty hard level, too. It's pretty It's pretty it's, brutal. It's mainly because we're so far behind the power curve, I think. Look at that. You're approaching it very rationally. Good on you, sir. I'm doing my best. We had a big problem with, because uh, uh, one of the rules of Ratchet and Clank is no arbitrary and visible collision. Right. Uh, and since I designed the houses to be spawners, uh, that immediately sort of flew in the face of that rule, because we don't want you to run in there when the when the the robots come out. Uh huh. Uh, so we had to come up with this elaborate system where uh, robots would come out of ones, but only ones that you weren't close enough to to get into, and even so you still could get into them. And, yeah. Oh, I like that you can break these. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's me. I mean, I didn't uh, do any of the art or actual work in making them out. But it's you. I no, I, I decided that they would be there. <laughs> That's what it takes. That's what it takes now to take credit for something? Yeah. I decided that they should be there. I said there's a shopping area here. Continue point. Buy some ammo? Yeah. Whew! You, you already, in one shot, are doing better than I did. I'm doing pretty great. Which lends credence to the idea that you are just better than me. I don't know if I told you this, Mike, but I'm pretty good at Ratchet and Clank. You are, uh, you are everyone's hero. I do know that. Oh, a rare... Oh, oh that guy is right, just like taunting you. I remember this area. Oh, there's a secret here. Once you killed everybody, I'll... Alright, yeah, I got some murdering to do first. 
I was very proud of this secret. Dude, your mini turrets took out those legs for you. They're good, man. I love that Max spent the time to make the, the robot tourists work in this area. And, like, big, huge kudos to him on this, man, because without him... Okay, Terminator the Water. Terminator the Water. Yeah. I'm gonna jump on that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh, and a platinum bowl. Yep. It's pretty sweet, huh? It's pretty good. Details. It's all about the details. And the taxi you know shows what? Up. Good on Max for actually putting that in. Ah! I missed the taxi. <laughs> really? Is that what happened? I had to jump half a foot, and I totally <laughs> missed it. Uh, I'm okay with that. But, uh, uh, I mean, like, uh, it's so, so, making that thing into a grindable ice surface Yeah. Uh, is so much work. Right. And for a stupid little secret that could probably be done otherwise, like with a glide, right? Right. Um, just kudos to him for, for doing that. Like, he, he really wanted to help make this level special. And so I think having, having a partner like that, like where Max really wanted to make this level awesome and I really wanted to make this level awesome actually allowed us to do that. Right. This is a bank. Thanks to Lloyd for actually putting in the bank vaults. That was pretty cool. Now that I'm getting more and more into this, it really does seem like something Lloyd would do. Yeah. Feel It does feel Lloyd-esque. I'm with you. I totally didn't design these setups. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm right. Leslie designed these setups for me. But, uh, you know, I did design the level. I put them all right. together. So, you know, that's got to count for something, right? Counts for something. Something new. It's these guys again. Hypnobot. Oh. The... oh, these guys are melee guys, though. Yeah, they're little swarmers. What the? Oh, I remember this area. There's another secret here. Yeah. You, for destroying this thing or something, right? Uh, I think there's like a swing shot target on the other side of it or something. It has yeah. something to do with the big monument. Yeah. You're right. Might have been a hypnomatic thing. Yeah, I think you need the. Yeah. You gotta hypnomatic those guys. And yeah, then you can yeah, get a yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And you can destroy that big Mega Corp logo. Oh, some style. Look at that. That was a good intro. Okay. I'm justifiably proud of this level. This is this is my best work in this game. I thought you said you didn't do this. What? I thought you said you didn't design the enemy segments. Uh, no, I, I designed the... Uh, uh, the flow. I got yeah. it. And then I also set these up and, and tweaked them and I changed got it. them. And so even up. though if you didn't design specifically where the enemies were going to stand or whatever, things like the intros and stuff like that. Right. And I didn't do the... Uh, uh, because basically the way it works when you're when you're a junior designer and someone else is designing the setups is they design the setups on paper and then you... Hey, look at that. I know those guys. Yeah, look at them. Uh, they design the setups on paper individually apart from each other. Right. And then I, I would take those pieces of paper and fit them together into a coherent flow. And then once we implemented the enemies, I was responsible for redesigning the setups... Gotcha. You know, uh, from that point. So I did a ton of work on them. I just didn't come up with them initially. I didn't have the idea for them. Like, Leslie was the one saying, okay, and here we'll have a gap. And here we'll have a ledge. Right? But I was like, oh, the gap is going to be uh, like a conveyor belt. And, you know, like, I got We do not make you go into first person often. It feels weird that we do. Uh, you might be able to just go further back. I think no matter what I do, I'm going to have to go into first person. Okay. But at least from here, they can't shoot me. This is a very rare first person. Uh, very rare. Yeah. Oh, more store shelves. There is so something with the store shelves. I don't remember what it is. Oh, the box breaker doesn't work on them. Oh, but oh, pets are coming out. Yeah, here. that's why. They're, they're not strictly breakables.
See, at this point, uh, so for example, uh, when Leslie designed this on paper, yeah, she said, okay, there's going to be a couple, you know, uh, pieces of cover here, and then guys. And I said, okay, they're going to be shelves, and the protopets will be jumping off the shelves. Got it. Because, yeah. you know, they're in, they're in their protopet boxes for being shipped out as toys, you know? Uh, so, like, there was there, a lot of the sort of, uh, uh, you know, choosing what was going to be where. Uh, was my stuff. Oh, there's more binary on here. <laughs> Somebody please translate that and tell me what it says. I think Lloyd was into the binary. Uh, I think I might have miscredited. Uh, no, Craig definitely did. The the, binary, he, no, well, he definitely did it in uh, the Canal City. But I want to know what those boxes say. Somebody decode it in Centonium. Yeah, mm -hmm. please let me know. Because I'm not going to do it. I got you, more important Don't you things. understand binary as a programmer telling me? Don't you speak the language of binary moisture converters? There's another Star Wars reference. I know. And I think I did it wrong. Yeah, some Star Wars fans are going to be really mad at you. Because they were moisture farmers who spoke the language of... binary language of moisture evaporators or something. Man, this is a long enemy section. I think this was the one, uh, this, this might have been the segment that Lloyd uh, lampooned me for, because it was so utterly impossible to do art for, <laughs> where he's like, so how do you designers do these things? Do you just, you know, roll some dice? Uh, oh. They're like, and here we're going to have a forest. And now you got to go into first person mode. I think this was, uh, this is why, th this was supposed to be explanation of why you bought the sniper rifle. Right. And I'm totally not using it. Yep. I got weapons to upgrade. Probably should pull out some sentinoids. Maybe some military too. Great idea. It's never a bad idea to have sentinoids and mini turrets. You know, the only way to make it better would be sentinoids, mini turrets, and shield generator. Yeah. We Which almost got enough to buy at least an armor upgrade coming up. And we desperately need that. You got almost half your health. And I was not nice with the continue points in this level, though. Yeah, well, don't be nice to the player. If you're nice to the player, they'll start to take advantage. They'll expect it. Don't worry, you'll get act tuned down in the next segment. Come on! I wonder if I'd still think it was fun <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Are you having fun, Tony? Having a pretty good time. It's challenging. I don't mind being challenged. And I think one of the big reasons for the challenge is really that we're underpowered. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're going to take advantage of the misplaced cuboids. Yep. So the way, uh, I, I might as well talk about that since we're alluding to it. The way that we would set enemies up in Ratchet uh, Terminator is that um, your, uh, uh, your standard enemy had sort of three alert radiuses. Yep. Uh, the first one was when they would wake up and start attacking you, right? And then there was a slightly bigger radius than that where they would... Uh, uh, And there was a second radius where they would fall asleep if you went out. And then there was a third radius in between those two where they would go into what we call an alert idle, where they would sort of look around for you so they didn't feel too stupid, like if you just crossed an invisible line. 